Hi, everybody. It's me, Marquise G. And if this is your first time seeing my lovely face, I am so humble and grateful to have you here on this channel watching my video. I This is episode two, episode two of G's Gems, where we're talking everything career, reality, and motivation. Like always, I have my guy Tyrus Duncan behind the camera. You can't see him, but he just waved at y'all. You definitely can see me through the mirror. Oh, you can see him through the mirror? <laughs> okay, great. He, you can see him through the mirror. You, so you're going to see all his natural reactions to everything crazy I say. Okay, just the hand. Okay, well, you saw his wave. Um, but yes, yeah, so last episode, we just gave a good little recap of where we've been in the last year and a half, here, there, and everywhere. A little bit of a hot mess train, but it's okay. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about motivation, what that means to me, what it looks like, how I cultivate it in my life. Um, and really with a lot of these episodes, it's just going to be based off of how I feel that day. You know, we're talking about figuring out life. What does it mean to grow up? What does it mean to be an adult? All these different things. So and motivation was something I was struggling with today, honestly. Like there's always so much going on. And I think this time of the year that we're in, um, you know, if you live in Indiana, you know, the seasons are changing. Fall is here. I love fall food. I love fall fashion. I do not like fall weather. I am not a winter girl. I am not here for it. Um, everybody's like, oh, it's so cute and all, all, all that stuff. Mm -mm, I'm not here for it. I need to be warm. I like the sunshine. The days are getting shorter. Um, I think it was dark. It gets dark at like eight o'clock now, something like that, like 7.30, 8 o'clock. I just feel like my day's getting started at like 5.45. So like, what's going on? I don't know what to do. So I'm lacking a lot of motivation um, to just get up and do a lot of things. But also when like real life is hitting you, like real life stuff is happening. So I haven't, uh, I'm not gonna tell y'all that. We're gonna, we're gonna leave this at that for another day. Any Hoosier, I'm going through some, the process right now of something really big for me, honestly. And I had my first like kind of conversation about it today and it was really stressful, like more stressful than I thought. And one of the things that I'm confronting right now is the ability to make a decision or the lack thereof. And I didn't even know this was a problem for me until like two months ago. And I was talking to my mom about God knows what, I don't know, we talk about everything. Make sure you check out um, Mommy Daughterish. the past episodes. We'll be bringing that back in 2023, hopefully. But if you know, me and my mom are super close, so we talk about everything. And we were talking about just something in regards to me. I'm 25 right now. Birthday's coming up. Sash season is coming. And I keep telling people that I feel like since I turned 25, I have a quarter-life crisis at least once a week. At least. It doesn't fail. At least once a week, I feel like my whole life is falling apart. On a bad week, it might be three times, but generally about once a week, I feel like my life is falling apart. And this was one of those days. And I'm not being dramatic when I say that, just like everything that's happening in the world or in my mind just hits me on one day and everything is miserable. I can't handle it, I can't take it. This was one of those days. And just as we were talking, everything that I was saying I, in the back of my mind, I was like, all these things require you to make a decision. And that was the first time it came out of my mouth that like, oh my gosh, I have a problem with making decisions. And I had to really sit there, like it really hit me like a gust of wind that that was something to be, to have an issue with. But I think a lot of people don't realize that you can have issues that aren't necessarily quote unquote common or something that people talk about, or maybe something a lot of people experience, but there's still a problem for you. And so even saying that out loud, I was like, how is that even a real problem to have when literally every day you wake up, it's making a decision. You know what I'm saying? Like, what shoes do I put on? What outfit do I wear? What am I gonna have for breakfast? Where am I gonna go out today? How long am I gonna stay at work? If you're like me, Yikes. But all these things are decisions. But when I thought about it, I was like, the decisions that I have to make now at this point in time in my life are real life decisions that affect everything that I do. And there's nobody to fall back on except for me. So that in and of itself 
is terrifying to me like actually very scary and now on on top of that not just having to make decisions for myself but I'm really intentional about you know growing my business and things of that nature and that's like one of the biggest things on my plate so I have to make decisions for myself and my business and I say like even those are those are kind of one and the same because I have to leave both of those like I have to treat my business as its own thing which you should because everything should be separate so I'm like, I have to make decisions for my business because if my intention is to grow this into a full-fledged company, the decisions that I make now are going to affect people in the future, whether they're my clients, my customers, my partners, future staff, whatever the case may be. So the thought of all that at one time, that is terrifying. That is absolutely terrifying to me. And so on this day where I'm thinking about making decisions, I'm like, granted, I've always been very like self-sufficient, independent, doing a lot of stuff, and I've had to make decisions. But the decisions that I had to make were like, do I want a peanut butter and jelly with grape jelly or with strawberry jelly? Like these are the type of decisions that I have to make where they're not really like too life or death de detrimental. And either way it goes, I'm gonna be fine. You know what I'm saying? But now it's just like, the decisions that I make, not necessarily saying every decision is detrimental, but the consequence of making the wrong decision can be very, very heavy. And that is the thing that terrifies me. So that in and of itself can be very detrimental to my motivation to the point where like, if it's something where I have to make a decision, I'll, I'll, I'll just try to avoid it. Like, honestly, it's also a very bad Sagittarius trait to just avoid things and just think like, oh, it's gonna work itself out. It's gonna like, I'm non-confrontational. I don't like issues. I just, in my mind, everything is my little pony, rainbows and stars, like all the time. But in reality, that's why we talk about reality. In reality, that's not what life is like. So today it was just a lot on my mental about having to make decisions and with other things going on in my life, like, do I cancel this? Do I not do this? Do I show up here? Do I cut like all these different things I have to make decisions for? But the biggest thing for me lately has been to one, just stop and take a breath. Shout out to Balance Period. To stop and take a breath and just bring myself to the present moment. Cause all of these things that I'm thinking about are in the back of my mind. You know, they're, they're a lot of the problems that we have, we create them in our mind. So one, realizing, okay, what are all these thoughts that I have in my head? Where are they coming from? Then realizing, okay, what is the decision that I need to make right now that is the most important, the most pertinent to me getting to whatever's next? Let's just start there. Then the thoughts that I have surrounding that, is this really a big deal? Like how much is my life really gonna be affected? Because another issue that I have is like perfectionism or the fear of failure that we have sometimes. And I'm starting to develop a different relationship with failure because like Murdoch says, the only L's we take are lessons. So the perception of failure of me losing everything is not proper, if that makes sense. The only time I can fail is if I quit. The only time I can fail is if I give up. The only time I can fail is if I never try to begin with. So the fear of failure is never what I think it is because I'm doing the thing that is pushing me, you know, to go to the next level, right? So thinking about that helps me to slow down all these different things. Then I have to remember why am I striving to go through this in the first place, you know? Um, and especially when it comes to when I'm telling you everything I do now is centered around building G4, building what that looks like, building it as a solid brand, building it as a household name, like everything I do is centered around that. And at the end of the day, if I can look and say this thing does not serve the purpose of building my business or adding to my business in any way, shape or form, then I'm, we, we can't even focus on that right now. But then for the decisions that do impact that, I have to think of, okay, what is the, the, the end goal? What is the major impact that's gonna have? And nine times out of 10, especially how things have been going for me lately, I can think of, okay, right now, 
this might be a huge opportunity. Or right now, this might not be a big opportunity, but I know when it comes back around or just saying I've been able to do this work or work with this person, it's going to make an extreme impact down the line. And remembering of what I'm trying to build G4 to be and what I know it has the potential to become, that is what motivates me. And beyond that, what really motivates me y'all is the people that I'm serving, the people that I'm helping, the community that I'm building. That's what really motivates me. Working with Tyrus and knowing we just met in February and that came from just community building and just to have someone that like, literally Tyrus had no idea what the, <laughs> we still don't know what it's gonna be. We still have no idea. But the fact that he got all his equipment and came and showed up just because he somewhat has an inkling of an idea and believes in what I'm trying to accomplish. Like that is what motivates me because I'm not gonna waste my time. So I don't wanna waste anybody else's time either. When I'm out and, you know, people that just saw a reel of mine or something on Instagram or having people come to me and saying like, oh, you said this at this event and it really aided me to change this about my life. Or um, a lot of you, uh, if you don't know or haven't been following G4, um, a lot of the teaching and workshops that I do center on building your network and communication and things of that nature. So when people say like, oh, I went to this event, like I used to be so scared to go out and introduce myself and I have made 10 new connections or you gave me this tip about networking and it led me to do this or it brought this into my business. Like hearing those type of things or just simply hearing like, wow, what you said empowered me. What you said motivated me to do this. That is the stuff that motivates me to get up every day. And even if I don't feel like it, even I could be down dog, tired, sad, all those things. But I'm like, no, because what I'm doing is beyond me. It's beyond me. So those are the things that I think about when I'm just not feeling the most motivated. And don't get me wrong, we're all human. So sometimes you just gonna have a day where I just need to be in the bed. I don't wanna talk to nobody. I just wanna eat ice cream and watch cartoons. That's all I wanna do. But I can't let myself sit there for too long because then it'll start to become an excuse. And then that excuse becomes a crutch. And then that crutch turns into paralysis. And that paralysis turns into further depression because you've gotten absolutely nowhere from that. So those are the things that I think about when I just don't have the motivation to get up and go. But then once I do get up and go, I feel so much better. Like being in, right sitting right here, even though I'm just talking to myself a little bit and Tyrus, like, I feel so good. I feel really, really good because this was a thought in my head. Again, the last YouTube video was over a year and a half ago. So to come from a year and a half, and it's been on my mind for a year and a half. It's just, I haven't had the time, the energy, all the things, but now this stuff, I have the resources, I have the opportunity to do it and not just say I wanna do it, but actually make it happen. Like that makes me feel so good. So whenever you are feeling low and like you just can't figure it out, just take a step back. That taking a step back and taking a deep breath, that does a lot. It can do a lot, not just for your current situation, but just for your mental state in general. Breathing has become a huge thing for me. And I know you say like we breathe all the time, but, and I shouted out Balance Period earlier, but for seriously, check out at Balance Period on social media or on podcast streaming, wherever you stream podcasts, doing the workshop with them and learning about breathing techniques and how to control my breath to, you know, relax my nervous system and center my mind and, excuse me, all these different things. It has really been super beneficial in my life and just making me aware of what is actually important and how am I inducing my own anxiety from stuff that's just being made up in my head. So I highly encourage you, if you're going through something like that, to just make sure you take a step back, take a deep breath, get your life together, write stuff down if you need to, write stuff down. Write down what's making you anxious, but also write down why you're doing the things that you wanna do. Because sometimes I realize that some of the things that I'm doing are unnecessary. Like they're absolutely <laughs> unnecessary for me to be doing. And then when I see the things that actually motivate me to do better, I'm like, okay, I need to do more of that. I need to do more of this activity. I need to be around these type of people more all these type of things. And under underneath all of that is intention. 
the intention that you have behind things is super important. When I started to align my intentions behind what I was saying and what I was doing, things really just started to line up in place. And I'm very um, observant but I think my awareness in general has increased a lot to be able to see how things are moving and changing and shifting. And when you can start to realize these things, I'm not gonna lie, at first I felt crazy. I felt literally insane because I'm like, how am I like noticing all of these things and they make sense? No one else is around me, like no one else can see what's going on, but the biggest thing I've learned is that your life is your life. Everybody's not going to understand it and everybody's not meant to understand it. We all have unique and individual and different paths and things of that nature that we're, that we're you know, going about in this life. So if you feel that way, it's fine. Again, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath and just realize what's going on in your life to make you feel that way. A lot of the times we feel this uneasiness and discomfort because what we're going through is new. And that's the purpose. It's new, it's different, but that means that you're moving in the right direction. So that's a lot of what gives me motivation. What gives you motivation, Tyrus? A lot of what you said, people, really people. People. And the why, and you know, the dream, the vision, the what's in front of more so than what's behind. Ooh, what's in front of and what's behind. That's a good one. Because you know, a lot of times when we are in that paralysis, phase is because of something that has already happened mm. instead of something that's going to happen. I mean, sometimes it may be that something that's going to happen, but that's where you have to switch that fear to faith. Ooh, fear. Y'all check out everybody, somebody. Okay. <laughs> check out everybody, somebody because Tyrus be dropping bars. Okay. Tyrus has big bars okay so make sure y'all check out everybody somebody but no i love that and definitely that faith to fear that is huge like this year has been definitely in 2020 it's like when i became i i was raised in church first of all so i'm not unfamiliar with god and you know faith and things of that nature but 2020 i really became more intentional about growing my relationship with god and not even just growing my relationship with God, but really understanding what faith is, what it means, and what it really looks like to fully rely on your faith. And y'all, it's hard. It is so hard. Oh my gosh. It is so hard, but it is so beneficial. And especially this year and these past couple months, really, I've been trying to really get into reading my Bible more. And when I'm telling you, like, the Bible really is the blueprint. It really is the blueprint. Like, seriously, it's so simple. Like, all God asks is to have faith, follow him, trust and believe. Now, it does not say it's going to be easy. It does not say he's going to do it when you ask him to do it. None of that. And I saw this um, this reel today, actually, and it just talked about, oh, my gosh, what did she say? It was so good. Basically saying that we wait for miracles or blessings to activate our faith when we should already be in our faith to activate the miracles and the blessings. And I was like, dang, that is so true. Like how many times have I looked at something good in my life and been like, oh man, God is good. Like, oh, he's like watching now, he's looking out. And then I just go back to my everyday life. Like, no, you still gotta keep that up. And you know what I'm saying? Like he's gonna bless you and all that stuff, but you gotta hold up your end of the bargain as well. So that's definite, de definitely a big one. And again, that fear piece, a lot of the times that fear comes from stuff that we have in, in our mind. What, what are we fearful of? It's, a, it's, a, it's all a what if, but fear is a negative what if, whereas faith is a positive what if. Very simple. Y'all, we're about to close it. We're about to close the show down. Okay, because what? Say that again. Oh, my God. So when you said fear is a positive what if, fear is a negative what if, and faith is a positive what if, but they're both what ifs. God. So it all goes to switching perspective. Is your perspective based in negative what if, which is fear, or is it based in positive what if, which is faith? Dang. So good. This is why Tyrus is my cameraman, because what? That was good. That was so good. It kind of just came off the top of the head. Not and that's, that, that's what, again, check out everybody, somebody, okay? <laughs> Check out everybody, somebody, because he does this all day on his own, okay? He does it all day on his own. No, that's really, really good. 
So that's that's the assignment for the week. That's the assignment for the week. Write down on a sheet of paper, faith and fear. What are you having faith in and what do you have fear about? And then look at that fear column and see how we can switch our perspective, like you said, switch our perspective and turn that into a positive what if. Like I saw, you see the meme of, um, you know, we always think about, you know, what if, what if we, you know, what if we do this thing and everything goes all wrong, but then it says, what if you do it and everything goes right? And I would much rather stay in that reality. Like it might be a fairy tale sometimes, but I'm gonna make that my reality because why can't it go right? And even, even still that perspective piece is so key because what does right look like? Just because you have an image of what success or what the right thing is or how this should go, that doesn't always mean if it doesn't go that way, that it failed, you know? And, you know, we always say that, you know, our plan isn't God's plan. That goes into that faith piece. Ooh, this is about to turn into a sermon, y'all. Okay, we're going to wrap it up because I'm getting excited. The, 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 real, the real point of that, the last thing you said of what's real or not or what your goal is, mm -hmm. you, you get to define it, which is the heaviest part. Check out everybody, somebody. Okay, check out everybody, somebody. This was good. I will, look. We already at our limit. We, I'm trying to keep these short for y'all, but we get. I will get real excited. And this was good. That's a good. That's a good place. We're gonna wrap it up right there. Just run back like the last ten minutes. <laughs> run back the last ten minutes if you need any type of motivation for the rest of your day, the rest of your week. But. Um, no, this was really, really good. Thank you guys for listening. Again, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share your thoughts, share your feelings, whatever's going on. Again, this is supposed to be open dialogue, open conversation, not just with me and this microphone or me and Tyrus, but we want to engage and build that community with you all as well. So please leave your comments. If you don't want it to be public, send a DM, all those different things. Um, all of our information will be in the description and all that good jazz. But yeah, thank you for tuning in to another episode of G's Gems and we will see you next time. Bye.